Well, hello guys. It is your boy, Snofsig, back at it again uh, with another video for you guys. So today's video, I'm going to be covering my top five favorite mountaineering books. These are five books that I would heartily recommend uh, you checking out from the library, purchasing, reading, uh, looking over. Uh, they've been a big help to me uh, for a lot of different in a lot of different ways. So I thought I'd share them with you so that hopefully uh, you guys can get some ideas. And if you're looking for some literature to pick up, maybe you're sitting at home bored because there's a pandemic on and you're trying to brush up on some of your mountaineering knowledge or skills, or you're just, you know, looking for some inspiration, I think these uh, might help you out, and uh, hopefully they can help you pass some of that time uh, while we deal with coronavirus and all of that crap. But let's get into the books. Now this is a regional one, so uh, bear that in mind, you know, but if you're in the Washington area, I cannot recommend enough the Becky Guides. Um, there's three of these. This is the first edition. I also have the second edition over there. Uh, I have not purchased the third edition yet, but I plan to. And these, they're sometimes referred to the, as the Becky Bible. Um, Fred Becky is a climber and historian who has an extensive or had uh, an extensive knowledge of the Cascades. He pioneered uh, tons of routes um, throughout the Cascades, lots of first ascents, first winter ascents, all sorts of things. He went everywhere um, and he, know, he knew a ton about the mountains here and he basically condensed his knowledge into these three guides and the, the three guides comprise the entirety of the Cascade Range in Washington and if you flip through them uh, he's got all sorts of useful information. It lists uh, all sorts of the main m main mountains, um, and it lists information on them: who made the first ascent, when, the first winter ascent. It lists route information, route variations. He's got like climbing topos. He's got some handy sketches of the mountains. There's some lovely pictures, and it's just a really, really in-depth, useful book. It's sort of like Summit Post before Summit Post was a thing. Um, now it does only cover Washington, of course, and the Cascades Mountains in Washington. But if you do climb in the Cascades or you'd like to, or you're you know, looking to uh, learn more about them, this is a fantastic resource that has a ton of information. And if you, can, if you do end up getting the whole set, uh, it, it, it may set you back a little bit, but they're so worth it, especially if you spend time climbing in the Cascades. These are a fantastic guide, and you really cannot go wrong with them. The, the knowledge in here is still unrivaled, even with things like Summit Post, uh, Peak Bagger, and other websites out there. There is still a ton of useful information in here that you won't find those other places. And often those other, place, those other websites will often refer you to the instructions in these guides because they may have been, they may be a little aged, but they've held up super well. So highly recommend the uh, the Becky guides there. That's number five. I, I put it, I put that kind of my fifth place spot just because it's a regional uh, type of deal, but I think they're really, really useful. This guy. This is a Right in the Rain notebook. You can purchase these for about 10 bucks. They make various different sizes and shapes of these. You can get smaller ones, you can get green ones. Uh, but this is just their classic yellow notebook. And although this technically is not a regular uh, book in that sense, I personally would really recommend these guys. And what I love about them is they're small, lightweight, and of course waterproof. So you can take them out in the field with you and you can do a ton with these. 
Uh, I'll often, uh, I use mine as like a journal, I'll use it as a sketch pad when I'm out in the mountains. Uh, I can use it to write down information so I don't forget things, trip planning, all sorts of things. These guys are super useful, uh, really versatile, and I would just really recommend having a notebook out in the field with you. There's a lot you can do with it. But what's also really cool about these guys is if you do go out there and you do uh, sketch or draw or you make some art or you journal in these while you're out in the mountains, I find that it's really nice to be able to uh, come back and reflect on your trips and things. And uh, if you save these, of course, after your trips, as you fill them up, uh, it can be really cool to look back on these and reread about your adventures and uh, look back on all of the cool things you've done and remember you know, what it was like to be out on that tr uh, trip. And especially in times like this where we might be a little more confined to our houses, we might not be able to get outside or go on as epic trips as me we might want, it can be really valuable to uh, have a written record of the places you've been, the emotions you felt, the things you've done, so you can look back on that, you can remember that, and uh, hopefully that can provide some inspiration for the future uh, once all of this uh, pandemic stuff uh, calms down eventually. Uh, so I'd say getting one of these, a write in the rain notebook, can be super useful for journals, for art, all sorts of things. That's my uh, fourth place spot. Again, fourth place just because it's not like your typical book. I think they're still really valuable. All right, now moving on to my number three spot. Mountains of the Mind by Robert McFarlane. This is a really cool uh, book about the history of mountains uh, and mountaineering and the uh, human fascination with mountains and how that developed and how mountains went from being something that were feared as a place that was very seems very dangerous that no one wanted to go there and how they transitioned to being a place where people are actively trying to get into the mountains, to look at the mountains, to climb the mountains, uh, all of that. And he sort of explores the cultural shift uh, between uh, this sort of formed this fascination for the mountains. And it's a really cool account. He also talks about his own uh, passion for mountaineering and how, and sort of uses that to guide the reader to understand how society and its views over mountains and mountaineering has changed over time and been shaped by different uh, forces. And it's just a really cool uh, book to better understand a little bit of why humans have a fascination with mountains, whether we've always had that sort of fascination, how it came about, how it developed, who uh, played key roles in sort of shaping how we perceive the mountains. It's a great read, especially if you're just sitting around uh, looking to kill some time. This is a great option. Um, you can probably pick it up at your library or, uh, of course, online. I'll try and leave links to these below, but I would definitely recommend that if possible, go out there and support your local bookstores or your library. So if possible, I'd definitely recommend either checking them out from the library or going to a local bookstore and purchasing it from there because uh, I think right now is especially a, an important, this is a good time to be supporting those local businesses if they're still open. Um, I think that's really important. So that's a, yeah, that's a tip for you. So that's my number three spot. Mountains of the Mind. All right, top two. My second favorite mountaineering book, Training for the New Alpinism, a manual for the climber as athlete. This is a really awesome text. It covers all sorts of physiology and exercise science and it has a ton of knowledge about training as a climber a mountaineer an alpinist whatever and it will help you become not only a better athlete but a better self coach uh, will help you plan your training better uh, and it'll it will help you train uh, better and by training better you can accomplish bigger goals and this has been a really useful textbook 
for me for developing training for my goals and it uh, offers so much knowledge and so much information that it can really be scaled to almost any sort of goals and it's a, just an incredibly useful uh, reference book to have uh, it's got tons of uh, great images uh, it's, it's got uh, plenty of diagrams and things it gives you example exercises uh, certain workouts it explains uh, everything it walks you through the physiology it talks about dealing with injuries mental things all sorts of things and it has a ton of little articles that are written in by various athletes and professional climbers uh, and other prominent climbers uh, talking about their own training methodologies and talking about how they apply the principles of training that are developed in this book to their own uh, exercise plans and to their own climbing ob objectives and how it's helped them. And that helps uh, you to understand the importance of the principles that they lay out in this book and just the overall impact that effective and smart and planned uh, training can have on your climbing. So if you're really looking to step up your mountaineering or alpinis, uh, alpinism, this is a great manual to help you uh, plan how you're going to get to that sort of next level and how you can accomplish uh, some really big goals. So I've really enjoyed using this one. Would definitely recommend uh, grabbing a copy of that. Excellent book just to have on hand. Um, you can check it out from the library. I did. I read it in two days and then I immediately went out and bought a copy because it was that good and I think it's just such a valuable resource to have on hand. Alright, now number one, you probably saw this coming. It's kind of obvious. And I would be a fool if I did not put this at the top of my mountaineering literature list. It is, of course, the one and only Mountaineering Freedom of the Hills. This is the ninth edition, the most recent edition. This has been the consummate textbook for mountaineers and climbers for like the past 30 years or maybe more. I'm not sure when the first edition was released, but this is an incredible text. This covers so much uh, climbing and mountaineering and alpinism knowledge and skill. It has amazing uh, diagrams. It's got all sorts of useful information. It explains everything from gear and travel uh, all the way up to big wall climbing, aid climbing, snow, ice, and everything in between. This is the consummate mountain climbing textbook and it does a really good job of doing that. It's got great illustrations and pictures. The writing is very clear and easy to understand. It's got so much information uh, and it really starts, it builds you up as you go through the book. And so as you f might start reading this, like again, I checked this out from the library and I bought it a little bit later. It's just such a useful text to have on hand, but really it walks you through. It starts with the basics, building up your camping knowledge, your wilderness travel knowledge, leave no trace, all of that. And as it builds in skill, you start, you know, as you get through the book, you're going up steep snow. Now you're maybe you're on ice, cramponing, ice axes, climbing, aid climbing, mixed climbing, waterfall ice. It has it all and they do a really, really good job explaining it and teaching you best climbing practices for all sorts of disciplines um, and really uh, most everything you'll encounter in the mountains is at least touched on in this book. Now it is a limited textbook so it cannot go into in intense detail about every element of mountain climbing but it will provide an amazing overview and uh, enough base knowledge where you can then have enough knowledge about a subject to go out and be in, and make intelligent uh, decisions on how you want to learn more about certain knowledge, right? Like it has a chapter on avalanches. Obviously, you know, a 20 page chapter on avalanches will not cover everything you need to know about avalanches, but by the time you've read and fully digested the knowledge that's in this book, you can then take that and you can then apply that by, you know, you now know a little bit so you can go out and maybe take an airy course and that this will provide a great primer for that uh, and where you can build your knowledge or you can go out and purchase more detailed books that are maybe dedicated to avalanches or avalanche science and you can use uh, this as a great foundation to build up that general base of knowledge and then you can get a little more specific with some other books. So that is why it is my number one pick for 
my top five mountaineering books that I would recommend uh, that you guys check out. So if you guys did enjoy this video, and I hope you did, uh, feel free to leave a thumbs up. Of course, I'll have links to all these down in the description. But again, I do ask, uh, if you do decide to purchase these, I think it's a great idea to go through your local bookstore. Uh, and it's always good to check them out from the library as well. Uh, so you can give them a read and decide if it's something you want, might want to pick up. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like. Uh, consider subscribing to see more videos. And uh, leave a comment if you have something, something to say. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.